So different ecosystems. In this chapter, we're going to study what is an ecosystem and what are the different types of uh, ecosystems and how they function. The word ecosystem first used by a British botanist and ecologist A. G. Tansley in the year 1935. So he first used the word ecosystem. According to A. G. Tansley, the nature works in a system which is uh, profoundly influenced by the non-biotic or environmental factors. So he says that the nature it functions as a system and he named that functional unit as ecosystem in which there is interaction among the different living organisms that, that are living together and their relations with the non-living components like air, water and other temperature and other factors. So before this uh, A.Z. Tansley many people studied the interrelationships uh, between organisms and they studied the interrelationships uh, between that uh, environment. But so they studied at the different levels like they used their terms like habitat, <coughs> habitat <coughs> and uh, at a very large level like biome and they used the terms like uh, ecological system but they didn't use this ecosystem habitat biome and ecological system those were the terms used by the scientist who studied the relationships between organisms previous to this A.G. Tansley so among this habitat is very small just organism and it's a living uh, place biome is very large it includes all the different ecosystems on the earth that is bio biome so, but uh, whereas uh, Tansley's study, what he proposed is that the term ecosystem. So, in this ecosystem, he consider one functional unit, one functional unit, not uh, uh, as small as habitat. It is big enough, which will provide place for different kind of organisms, not the habitat of a single organism, different kind of organisms which are living together in a specific functional unit in which they are interdependent on each other and they are also interdependent on the environmental factors and which makes it as a sustainable functional unit. So it is self-sustainable. An ecosystem is self-sustained. That means it will run with the living and non-living components of that particular unit. So that is the self-sustained unit. So that is uh, given by A. G. Tansley. So now we got the definition for that ecosystem. So we can take different examples. For example, we can take a tree as a terrestrial ecosystem, land ecosystem. So why we take a tree? Tree is a functional unit on which uh, so many different organisms they live. We can see on the tree different kind of animals, different kind of uh, small uh, plants, lichens or mushrooms growing on the tree, they are interacting with each other and at the same time uh, we see different kind of insects, beetles that are found and the tree is interacting with the air surrounding it, absorbing the water from the ground. In such a way it is a functional unit. So for example, if you wanted to study some ecosystem, how do you study? Say for example, let us look at an activity you wanted to study uh, your garden or your school ground. So in the garden there is a grass but it is a very large area. So you wanted to study a uh, particular unit of it then you can make some markings of uh, 1 meter width, 1 meter height. You can marking on the ground you can put some poles and you can tie some rope. In this way you are selecting a small bit of the land you can consider this is the ecosystem that you have selected for study. So in this you will find, what do you find in, the, in your ecosystem? Then you will come to understand better about the ecosystem. So in the plot you have selected, you will find plants, grass, 
and you will also find beetles insects other insects and small animals may be like rats so in this way we find plants and we find animals and you will also find that abiotic factors like soil water sunlight so these are the abiotic factors then you will understand how the abiotic factors are interacting with the biotic factors biotic means living plant and animals abiotic means water sunlight soil these are all the abiotic factors so if you have taken some pa a part a structural unit so where living non living uh, things are interacting so when you consider this part as an ecosystem then you can understand or you can observe how, how the relationships are built between living things and with the non living environment so let us see that interdependence between biotic components interdependence plant plant is dependent on the animals of an ecosystem it is dependent on animal animal is dependent on plant because animal it may eat the plant to get its food requirement or animal it may depend on plant for its oxygen requirement in the same way plant it may depend on animal for its carbon dioxide requirement in such a way plants and animals living in an ecosystem are dependent on one another that is either for food either for uh, oxygen or carbon dioxide even different animals one animal may be different on another animal dependent on another animal so certain small animals are eaten by the big animals if this is a small animal it is eaten by the big animal in this way there is a relation among the different animals that is observed here so in the ecosystem we not only see the interdependence between the different biotic compounds components we also see that uh, differences uh, between uh, the interrelation between the biotic components and abiotic components see living organisms the relations with their abiotic components let us see and soil abiotic component so from the soil say for example here plants soil will give nitrogen pota potassium phosphorus such kind of elements so soil is giving again the organisms they give back this nitrogen potassium phosphorus to the soil so there is interaction soil is giving the nutrients and organisms are giving back the nutrients to soil in the same way water water will give oxygen to the living organisms which are living in the water if any organisms are living like fish or other organisms living in the water they get their oxygen from the water dissolved oxygen so water is giving oxygen here and again the living organisms the plants present in the water ecosystem will return the oxygen to the water so you can find the interaction between the biotic components and abiotic components 